This is E.T. Determining great in the boxing world, as opposed to the best, demands two things. Number one, complete domination of all competitors of his era in the ring. And number two, notoriety or performance beyond or outside boxing, something that very few have achieved. Some that come to mind are Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, maybe John L. Sullivan, perhaps George Foreman. This is Vitaly Klitschko, the greatest heavyweight of the modern era since Sullivan, in my opinion. Standing six feet seven inches, weighing usually around 240 pounds, he is the current mayor of Kiev, capital and largest city in war-torn Ukraine. Klitschko was formerly a member of the Ukrainian parliament, and he was slated to become Ukraine's president. He may yet become president. And he's holder of multiple World Heavyweight Championship titles. The WBO 1999-2000, he was Ring Magazine favorite 2004-2005. WBC title two times between 2004 and 2013. He retired in 2012 at the age of 42. He knocked out in his last three fights. Number five rated Thomas Adamic. Adamic had a 44 to one record before he met Klitschko. He was knocked out in round 10. He had lost by 90 to 80, according to all three judges, pretty much every round. Klitschko had also a unanimous decision over Derek Chisera. Chisera came in with a 16-2 record, having lost only to highly rated then Robert Hellenius. And I saw it in the film of that fight. I thought Chisera won. The other loss was to Tyson Fury. He lost to Klitschko overwhelmingly by 118 to 110, 118 to 110, and 119 to 111. Klitschko, again in his last fights, got a fourth-round knockout over previously unbeaten Manuel Char. That was in September of 2012. Klitschko won every round previous to the knockout. Now keep in mind, George Foreman was considered ancient when he returned to the ring in 1987 at age 38. Vitaly was 42, still at the top of his game, and at the time, he had been consumed by politics for years, almost a decade. He'd already run twice to be Kiev's mayor. He didn't make it the first two times. He had led the Orange Revolution in 2004, which got Viktor Yushchenko elected president then. Boxing, what I'm saying, was more of a hobby for Vitaly Klitschko, while politics was consuming his time and energy. Vitaly Klitschko was unique for other reasons, too. He and his brother Vladimir, also a heavyweight title holder, were sons of a Ukrainian hero, Major General Vladimir Klitschko, whose leadership over the first days of the Chernobyl disaster cleanup resulted in his death by cancer. Vitaly's unique, too, because both he and Vladimir were formally educated, both earning doctoral degrees. Vitaly is fluent in four languages. He is known as a very good, a competitive chess player. You see him here with Vladimir Kramnik. Kramnik defeated Garry Kasparov to become world champion. But back to boxing. Yes, Vitaly does have two L's or losses on his record but he was never beaten. He was ahead in points during both encounters. The first loss was to Chris Bird. Klipcho had to retire because of a torn rotator cuff. He had won eight of nine rounds, according to two scorecards, seven to nine on the others. The second loss was to Lennox Lewis in December 2003. Klitschko had a severe cut above the right eye. He wanted to continue. He was ahead four rounds to two. 
Keep in mind, Lewis refused again to fight Vitaly Klitschko. The WBC threatened to take away Lewis's title, but he retired. Otherwise, Vitaly never lost a fight, was never knocked down. He likely has lost fewer rounds than any fighter recently. Only he and George Foreman have defended a title after the age of 40. Vitaly would have captured even more belts, except that he'd promised his mother that he'd never fight his brother Vladimir. And if you wonder who would have won that fight, well, I'll tell you my opinion. It would not go over one round. Nobody tops Vitaly Klitschko as a boxer turned politician. Now, it's true. A few amateur boxers have done well in boxing. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, for instance, a welterweight. Uh, Senator John McCain. Tommy Douglas in Canada was an amateur lightweight champion in the 20s. He later became premier of Saskatchewan. And other professional boxers have done well in politics. Most famous under Klitschko would be Manny Pacquiao, a member of the Philippine Senate, maybe a future president of the Philippines. There was Alex Arguello. He, after retiring from the ring, was elected mayor of Managua in Nicaragua, but he committed suicide months into office. There was Dan Mandel. He fought for the Canadian middleweight title. Later, he's on the Canadian uh, cabinet. And then there's former heavyweight champion, I think he held the WBA title, uh, Nikolai Valuev, the largest champion ever, seven feet, 300 plus pounds. He served in the Russian State Duma, or Congress. But no fighter, aside from Pacquiao, has, number one, been considered for his country's presidency. And both, by the way, have a good chance of being elected. And number two, has pursued a political boxing career simultaneously. Vitaly, as I mentioned, was years into politics while he was active as a boxer. Nobody, number three, has served his in a country so politically dangerous and corrupt as is Ukraine. In a near state of anarchy, and Vitaly, keep in mind, is now fighting as mayor an invading Russian army. Nobody, number four, has achieved expertise such as Vitaly in other intellectual endeavors. For instance, chess, fluency in multiple languages. Not true. Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali were active politically, but it was symbolically. It had to do with the civil rights campaigns, anti-war movement for Ali. They were not directly involved in politics. And there was former light heavyweight and heavyweight champion Gene Tunney, very well read. He'd be often quoting Shakespeare. He married a rich socialite. They produced offspring who did well in politics. Now that includes United States Senator John Tunney of California. But Gene Tunney never himself held office. So, No boxer comes even close to Vitaly Klitschko's political performance, influence, education, and smarts. But what about his boxing dominance? Was he the best? Well, his ring career began in 96, 1996. It ended 2013. That's 17 years. He retires age 42. Despite all the diversions and interruptions, his success never faltered. That is extremely rare. You look at Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali, rather short careers of that preternatural dominance. Vitaly was the same when he started and when he left boxing. His success never faltered. Ali remained undefeated from only 1960 to 71. That's when he lost first to Joe Frazier. Uh, He was only 29. He went on to lose three more times before he retired. I believe Ali was 39 in 1981. Now, true, Ali's career was interrupted during his prime by his resistance to the draft. Joe Lewis was active from 1934 to 52. 
was it 52 or 51? I can't remember. Uh, write it in below. He retired at age 37. He, Joe Lewis, had been outpointed and then knocked out by Max Schmeling in 1936. Lewis was in his prime at age 22. He later lost to Ezra Charles by decision, then Mark Ciano by knockout. He, Joe Lewis, was behind on points to Billy Kahn until Kahn tried to slug it out with Joe. Now, I'm not saying anything to denigrate Joe Lewis's record. It was phenomenal, especially since it was interrupted by World War II. Sergeant Joe Lewis trained soldiers and performed in the ring, but that absence from training had to have had an effect, negative effect, on his conditioning and timing. But Vitaly Klitschko uh, has to remain, in my mind, the absolute dominant figure. Retiring at, 80, at 42 and still fighting like he did when his prime, dominating the division. So there you have it. Proof, in my opinion, that Vitaly Klitschko was the greatest heavyweight since Sullivan. Greatest because he dominated his division for almost two decades, remaining as strong as ever while pursuing a political career. And because he was and remains extremely well-educated, talented, multilingual, top chess player, holder of a PhD degree, who during the current war with Russia may be the second most important individual in Ukraine next to Zelensky himself, who, by the way, Vitaly does not like. So why do many, in particular Americans, not rank Vitaly Klitschko so high? Many don't even know about him. Well, it can be explained by economics. Vitaly made more money fighting in Germany than he could here in the States. So, as a result, U.S. promoters, press, cable networks denigrated or ignored him completely, attacking his fighting style, calling him boring, because he was making European promoters and media and not Americans rich. Tom Leffler of K2 Promotions put it this way, and I'm quoting Leffler, The economics just made sense for Klitschko to fight with the German TV deal that he and his brother signed. They sell out soccer stadiums over there. The only person that has come close to that kind of thing is when Manny Pacquiao fought in Dallas where the Cowboys play. But the Klitschkos fight regularly in front of 30,000, 40,000 seat arenas. And it's hard to match those economics here in the USA. And that's it. Write in your comments below, share this video on social media, hit the bell icon to be notified of new uploads, and it's important to like the video too. Thank you.